Okay, thank you. Um, so this is joint work with uh, my student Mor Baruch from Tel Aviv and Pierre Fagnot from uh, CNRS. Um, so this talk, I guess, is slightly out of the main theme of this week because the focus is not on about interactive coding. Well, but but Yael talked about distributed interactive coding, and now we'll talk about distributed. Okay. So well, let's start by just uh, setting uh, the, the ground. What's a distributed algorithm? What do, what do I mean when I talk about distributed algorithms? So we think about a graph, a network, where nodes uh, represent processors and edges represent communication links. And each processor runs individually. There is no central control. There's no you know, global coordination thing, except for you know, the protocol they agreed to run on uh, in the beginning. Uh, we have no shared memory. One variant of distributed computing deals with shared memory systems. Here, this is not the case. So the only way of communication is message passing, as, is, uh, as was discussed throughout this week. Uh, we will talk about what's called the local model. Uh, in the local model, we'll assume that the protocols proceed in synchronous rounds. Synchronous rounds mean that there is some kind of a global tick that goes like that. Everyone hears it. It may be numbered, it may be just, you know, the tick. So that in each tick, between two ticks, first each node receives all messages sent to it in the previous round. Then it does some local computation, which we don't count really, and then sends messages to be received in the next round. It can send messages to any of its neighbors, messages could be, uh, to be, could be different for every neighbor, and so on. Uh, just to make it uh, uh, kind of elegant, we can assume that the inputs to the nodes are received at the beginning of round one, as if the environment sends them to the nodes at round zero. Uh, so in the local model, messages are usually unbounded. We do not assume here any corruption of messages. We do not assume here uh, nodes failing by crashing. These are kind of uh, standard uh, parameters in distributed computing that people play with. This will not be the case here. Uh, I'll mention in a minute what kind of failures we would like to be resilient against in this context. So just to give you an example, it's very easy to construct a BFS tree in uh, this model, right? Some node, assuming that some node gets from the environment uh, a, trigger a trigger event, and then it sends messages to all its neighbors, which send messages to all their neighbors, and each node records what is the uh, origin of the first message it got, and here we have a BFS tree. Sure. No, that's a, that's a very good thing, a, a good question, I mean, because what's strange, so, some, what strikes people as strange in this model is that in many cases, the problems we would like to solve are a function of the network, okay? So the network is not only the communication medium, it's also the input. So initially, we assume that each node knows only its identity. Usually, we assume there is ID to the, uh, to the nodes, and uh, maybe the identity of the neighbors, and possibly some other uh, uh, quantities related to the link, say, I don't know, the cost of a link, or the weight of a link, or something like that. So computing a tree of a network is an important uh, distributed task, which is used, actually, in many type of communication networks. Right? I mean, this is, this is like the, uh, uh, the uh, domain of problems in which we are mostly interested. It's not usually some algebraic uh, questions, but something that has to do with the topology of the communication network. Okay. Uh, so this is the general framework, and I will be talking about proof labeling schemes. So the motivation for this type of problem is the following. We, have the, uh, this, uh, we think about the following you know, uh, uh, story in general. There was a distributed algorithm that computed some output, say a minimum weight spanning tree, or any other kind of function of a network, or some kind of a network and the input at the nodes. Uh, distributed algorithms are, in many cases, slow. 
So there are many problems if you restrict the, the bandwidth if the bandwidth or the communication, the bandwidth of the communication link is restricted, then many uh, problems cannot be solved in less than square root of n time. Even if the, the diameter of a network is very small, it could be, I don't know, logarithmic or, or even constant, still you need square root of n time just to be able to, to get the answer right. So the distributed algorithm worked, perhaps uh, square root n time, and it produced the output. Now, it could be the case that the output, due to some malfunction, was corrupted. Okay? Uh, so, what we would like to do is to have a system that looks at the output and makes sure that it is correct with respect to the specification. Okay? So, one way to do it would be, of course, to run the distributed algorithm over and over again, but this is expensive. So what we would like to do is to do that so that a corruption will be quickly detected and so that the uh, communication overhead required for the detection is as small as possible. Okay? That's the, that's the general story. Yeah. Exactly. This would be what the, the general idea, but we would abstract the algorithm away. Okay? We don't, uh, you can do that, but uh, uh, what we would like, so here's a, 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 some uh, uh, formalization. We're given a network configuration. A network configuration is just a topology and possibly some, uh, some input at each node. Uh, and there's a predicate over the configuration, say that uh, a selected set of edges is a minimum weight spanning tree, for example. Okay? And we would like to, to make sure that the configuration satisfies the predicate. Oh, I'm sorry. Configuration here means uh, the network and some representation of the output, local representation of the output. And we would like to make sure that well, whatever the output uh, is, it satisfies the uh, specified predicate. Okay? Uh, so here's a trivial example. Think about vertex coloring, right? You can run, there are distributed algorithms that can do vertex coloring in uh, log star n time. Uh, and it's uh, quite trivial to verify that the coloring is, is legal, right? Every node just checks for all its uh, neighbors, but their, colors, uh, but their color is distinct from its own, okay? So uh, the point is actually what does verification mean in the distributed setting, okay? So if the color was okay, then all nodes say, okay, and if the coloring was uh, defective somehow, like this monochromatic edge, then some node detects a problem. Uh, uh, presumably, a node that detects a problem can pull, uh, you know, uh, the, can push a red button, which will make the algorithms uh, restart again and uh, get a, a good configuration. And if uh, everything is fine, no one pushes the red button, and we are happy with the output, and we continue on. Okay? So, uh, uh, another predicate would be, for example, looking at the spanning tree. So, a spanning tree, the, 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 uh, the uh, natural representation would be for each node uh, an indication of which of its incident edges are in the tree. Okay? So these are the edges here, colored uh, orange. Uh, the problem is that this indication is insufficient to detect a problem, right? I mean, if uh, the, the selected edges constitute a cycle, who would know that? Uh, uh, the red node here cannot distinguish the, the, between the global configuration of a cycle and the global configuration of a tree, okay? So, as Alex uh, uh, suggested, what, uh, what we will do in the idea called proof labeling scheme is to augment the state at, at each node, the state representing the output, with some additional redundancy that will allow us to quickly detect that something went wrong. Okay? So, in the example of a tree, the idea is very simple. You pick a root for the tree, and now you label each node uh, 
with both the ID of the root and the distance from that root. Okay? Now, so this is just the augmentation. So we need log n bits, uh, order log n bits, additional uh, 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 augmentation at each node. And now the, the uh, verification could be done as follows. Uh, each node sends this uh, uh, information to all its neighbors, and each node verifies two, th two things. One is that all neighbors have the same root, uh, agree on the, the root ID, and the second one is that among all the three neighbors, among all the selected edges, there is exactly one neighbor whose distance to the root is smaller <coughs> by one. This is true only for the non-root node, the root node just verifies uh, the first one. Okay, now why is this true? Uh, well, for example, if uh, of course that the, uh, the, the uh, distances, what is it here? Yeah, so again, this is what we have here. Yeah, so this is what, this is just the, the decision procedure. Um, so the, what, what do we want here? Um, slightly, the, these are of course uh, the, the slides of Mall, so I'm not quite with it here, but let's see. What we have is the following, right? I mean, we have for each, for each, uh, for each node we have a distance, for each node we have a root of the root ID. So the distances, making sure that the distances go strictly down uh, for each node, uh, there is a, a, a parent with a strictly smaller distance. This will make sure that we have no cycles. And agreeing on the same ID will make sure that, uh, we, that the tree is indeed spanning so that we don't have uh, two disconnected trees, for example, because the last node, I mean, the root must check that all its children agree with its, root, uh, with its own ID and uh, that the, uh, <coughs> and uh, there is no, uh, and uh, so this, this uh, its own ID is spread throughout the tree. If we had two trees, someone will detect the problem. Yes. Uh, all at the same time with each node. Yeah. Right? So how do you, I mean, I still don't see why does it suffice? This, what you're saying is each node just locally checks if uh, the root ID is the same uh, supplied by the, per, uh, the, the helper. No, no, the root ID at the, at the neighbors, but its own label agrees with the root ID at all neighbors. Okay? Prepared also by the helper. We'll we'll formalize that in a minute. Sure, uh, but uh, that's fine. But now, uh, and, and it just checks the distances, right? Uh, but there is exactly one neighbor which is closest. Uh, mm -hmm. So 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 let me repeat that again. We want to verify that the set of selected edges is a spanning tree. So there are two parts to that. One is that it's a tree, namely it's acyclic. And the second of it is that it's a uh, spanning, namely it's a tree and not a forest. Okay, so acyclicity is made sure by by uh, looking at all neighbors and finding exactly in one neighbor, uh, which is a neighbor uh, uh, by the three edges, by the edges locally marked uh, uh, as uh, edges in the tree. One of exactly one of them needs to have distance which is larger which is smaller, I'm sorry, which is smaller. This would be the parent, okay? This will make sure that you don't have cycles. No, no, this is a necessary condition, I understand, but why is it sufficient and why couldn't this somehow the helper just fool the, fool the, this, everybody believing? This is certainly a necessary condition. Well, uh, so maybe it wasn't, may, so the idea is that this is constantly checked in every round. It's not that the helper tells a node 
what are the labels at the other at the other uh, nodes? We act, in fact, in every round, every node sends its information to all neighbors. So every node in every round receives information from all neighbors, and this is being verified. No, no, no. It's ongoing, ongoing. No, no, no. In every round. So the algorithm now is gone. We, all we have now is input with some augmentation called label. And now, in er uh, because we fear that at some point there will be some kind of a transient error that may flip some of the bits in the output. And we would like to make sure that the output is correct all the time. And so how many rounds will we use for this? One. One. So maybe I should just... constantly going? Uh, uh, constant what? What do you mean? You say that something is al always going. Yeah. It's one round, what do you mean? Like it, this, this one round keeps going every, you know, every round you make the, this verification. Maybe I should just skip to the, def, to, the, the, to the definition, okay? So here's the definition. We, the, the, the system we think about is the following. There is some, uh, uh, G, there is some, uh, tagged some out some distributed output we call g sub s okay there's a graph and with the output representation we call it g sub s so the state in each node represents the output now there is some an entity we call the prover the prover augments the state at each node with some additional uh, thing called labels okay now we get a graph called g tilde sub s this is the output with, uh, with, augment, augment, with some labels. Okay, so now this goes out of the story. All we have is the graph, the, uh, where we, uh, and each node we have a representation of the output, and the labels. So now we have an entity called the verifier. So what does the verifier do? The verifier in each round sends out the label to all uh, neighbors and receives label from all neighbors. It applies some local algorithm, and then it outputs either true or false. If everything looks fine, it says true. If something looks bad, it says false, okay? And, uh, and the condition would be that if the output uh, is correct, then there is a labeling scheme so that everyone will be happy. Every, all ver local verifiers will output true. And if the output is incorrect, like this GS already did not satisfy the predicate, then whatever the, the augmentation the prover does, at least one verifier will detect that something is fishy. So for spending three, we make one round of checking at the end and never repeat. Uh, well, yeah, the, 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 the way we actually use it is that the verifier is being invoked in every round again and again. Because we don't know when the error will occur, right? Whenever you want to verify, you run the verifier for one round. Okay. Okay? Other questions? Okay. So in pictures, it looked like that. So, we, so here is a node V, and uh, it's, it's two neighbors U and W. They have a representation of the output called S of V, S of U, S of W here. Okay, this is just the output. But the output may be insufficient for verification, so we augment the state of each node with a label, L of uh, the, the node. Uh, then in verification, the labels are exchanged, so each node receives the label of all its neighbors, and then it runs a local algorithm looking at the local state and label the local label and the neighbor's label, and then it outputs either true or false. Yeah. So I have a question about the prover. Yeah. Uh, so you see that the prover is in our right? Yeah. Ideally, that would be the case, yes. But we don't, we don't uh, analyze the prover too much. We just want 
So we are asking, is there a, a scheme that, that uh, allows the prover to prove that the output is correct so that no incorrect output can be, so that all incorrect output will be verified no matter the, the, what the labeling is. Okay. But still, in, in like in practice, if you want to have a scheme like that, you need a prover that would be able to give the correct labels, right? So you could that generates the correct labels. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. But you don't, this is not Yes. Okay. Uh, so the, the correctness condition, as I mentioned before, is the following. We say that a, a PLS, PLS is proof labeling scheme. This was introduced by Kutin, Koman, and Peleg back in uh, 2005. If that if the input is correct, then there is a labeling scheme so that everyone will output OK. And if the input is incorrect, there's at least one node that must detect it. The point is that here, you know, the, 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 the error we want to, to uh, withstand may actually also play with a label, right? So we don't know what will happen, but if the output is incorrect, then uh, whatever, uh, whatever uh, labeling was applied, someone will detect it, okay? Okay. Uh, so what's the complexity uh, that we care about in this case? Well, the complexity we care about is the overhead required for verification. Okay, so we abstract away the uh, complexity that may be uh, due to generating the labels, but we want just to verify because this is something that we will do periodically. Okay. So the, uh, the, com the complexity is just proportional to the size of the label. This is the communication overhead required for verification. Okay. Now, it's easy to see that you can come up with a universal scheme. Whatever the predicate is, you can just verify it by letting each node have a label that describes the whole graph, the whole input, everything. Okay, so everyone has this global view of, the, of the, uh, the network, the input, as a label. All you have to do is that all neighbors agree with your view and that, you, uh, that the view actually corresponds to what you have locally. Okay, so if you have that, you can uh, apply the local, you can apply the global predicate just locally and decide it. So this is very simple. And uh, if you need S, uh, if you have S bits of input at each node, then the, 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 the overall complexi uh, complexity is the number, is the size of the graph, which is order of E, and the, si and the, the total size of the input. Okay. So this is very expensive, and people are interested in doing something much more uh, efficient. Uh, like for the spanning tree, what we saw was a scheme where the labels had just size log n, right? We just we needed to remember the, uh, a distance value bounded by n and uh, an ID log n bits. Uh, okay, so this was the state of affairs, and then we proposed to look at randomized uh, proof labeling scheme, and this is the main thing I'm going, to talk to, I'm going to talk about today. And what we have is just the same overall structure, you know, the, the prover generates uh, the uh, labels and we get this uh, annotated graph G tilde S. And then the verifier the, runs the verification protocol whenever verification is needed. Uh, but now the verifier is a randomized protocol, a randomized algorithm which means that it has uh, access to, uh, to random bits. We're talking about only private random bits here, okay? So the way it works in pictures is the following, okay? So we have, as before, the, just the, uh, the, the, uh, the graph, that the, the property we would like to verify, which is uh, represented by S of V at each node V. And uh, the prover assigns a label just once to the nodes. 
Uh, now the verifier at each node sees the local uh, the local uh, state that we would like to protect. It sees the label, which was already given, and it sees this uh, uh, string of random bits. Uh, given this, it generates for each neighbor a random certificate. And it send, so it sends one certificate to this neighbor, one certificate to that neighbor, and so do these guys, and they exchange these uh, uh, random certificates. And finally, each node, after receiving the, the, the randomized certificates from all its neighbors, applies some deterministic algorithm and outputs whether the, it thinks that everything is fine or not. Okay, so the only the way that we use uh, uh, randomization is to generate the uh, the certificate. This is now called certificate. Uh, this is as, uh, like the natural extension to the deterministic scheme. Uh, and the, the thing we borrowed, you know, from complexity theory is assuming that the final way of uh, deciding whether a verifier accepts the certificate or not uh, does not employ randomization. It's just deterministic. Okay, so just generating the, uh, the certificate is randomized, deciding is deterministic. Uh, now, so what's, now, uh, what's the condition of, of correctness now? We say that uh, a randomized proof labeling scheme is correct for a given predicate. If for every configuration, every yes instance, right? Uh, uh, and there is, a, uh, there is a labeling scheme, namely the, label, the good labels, the labels that were assigned by the prover, uh, the, the, all local verifier algorithms will output true with probability two-thirds. So probability two-thirds, but everyone says yes, okay? And if the input is a no instance, then for any uh, labels as, uh, that the verifier uh, uses, the generating, to generate certificates, there will be at least one node that outputs uh, false with probability at least two-thirds. Okay, so this is uh, one, uh, one definition. Another definition would be a one-sided error, which requires uh, the, that if the labels are the correct labels and the, the input is a yes instance, then, all, then the probability of saying yes is one. Okay, and uh, allowing error for saying you know, uh, a yes by mistake only if the, the uh, input is a no instance, okay? So that's the definition, that's, and this is the main, uh, this is the overall mechanism. Okay, so what do we care about? We care about the communication overhead. The communication overhead is proportional to the length of a certificate, the length of the uh, random, uh, randomized message that we send, okay? Uh, we don't really care about the label size, which is just the space complexity of the node, only the, the communication overhead. Uh, and one immediate easy result is to see that if you use randomization under these uh, assumptions, then the communication complexity drops exponentially always. Okay, this sounds, uh, this sounds a little too much, but actually it's a very simple observation. The idea is the following or maybe just the statement, if we have any distributed predicate P, if we have a deterministic labeling scheme with a communication complexity K, then there is a randomized communica uh, proof labeling scheme with communication complexity log K. Okay? So how is that true? The idea is very simple. Suppose that you have a deterministic uh, proof labeling scheme uh, with, that gives you labeling assignment and so on, and uh, uh, verification. So we construct a randomized proof labeling scheme based on it as follows. Let each node in the randomized scheme have the labels 
not its own, not only its uh, its local label, but also the label of all its neighbors. Okay, so a, na uh, a, a node of degree d, instead of holding just a single label, now holds actually d plus one labels. Okay. Now all you, that we need to do is instead of sending the full, uh, the, my own label, all I will send to each of my neighbors is a random hash of my own label. Okay, essentially I'm running the equality protocol from communication complexity. Okay, uh, now every node when it receives a random hash, it just very it just verifies that it agrees with the picture of the full label it has. Okay, and now we can apply the uh, the uh, the local algorithm from the, de the de from the deterministic scheme. Okay, so we just do a simple reduction here, relying on the fact that actually we don't pay for the label generation and we don't pay for the uh, space complexity of the labels. Just communication. This is what we care about. Okay, so this is easy. Uh, Excuse me? The degree of the graph? The max degree of the graph? No, I mean, you know where the messages are coming from. Okay? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so this has the nice corollary. Well, we had this this uh, uh, universal scheme for deterministic uh, 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 proof labeling schemes, that cost us polynomial uh, number of, of polynomial polynomial communication for verification, and now we can do it in logarithmic uh, logarithmic communication just by using this uh, general reduction. Okay. So this is easy. Let me show you what's some, something which is slightly more interesting in terms of lower bounds. What we, can sh what we have is this general technique of how to prove lower bounds on the communication needed for, lab for uh, proof labeling schemes. And the basic technique that we use is something called crossing. Okay? It will be for both. It will be for both. Actually, it's actually written here. So here is the, 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 the thing. Fix a, a, a distributed predicate P. Okay. Now, assume that we can find some kind of a network configuration, some kind of an instance, uh, that contains a set of uh, edges, what denoted F, for fooling, uh, such that if we cross any two edges, crossing two edges means take these two edges, for example, and you cross them. Okay, so you, you connect the head of the one to the tail of the other and vice versa. So if you find a set of such F edges, so that crossing any two of them flips the output of P, right, makes a yes instance into a no instance or vice versa, then uh, then we can say that the, a lower bound on the size of a communication, of the communication overhead for deterministic uh, proof labeling schemes is omega of log f, and for the randomized communication scheme is omega of log log f. Okay? So actually, uh, what we know is for randomized communication scheme to show it only for one-sided uh, error. For two-sided error, we can show something with other caveats. I'll, I'll mention that in a minute. But this is the main idea. You want to find a, you want to find a, one instance and with a, with a, with a edges with, with a large set, to a set of edges, so that crossing any two edges, you know, from this to that, will flip the result. So yeah. It's a, it's a, um, the configuration is just the graph annotated with, uh, with, uh, w annotated with uh, the, the output. So here what we do is we, this is, um, 
This is actually the graph, this is a, a graph predicate. This is about graph predicate. Okay, so let me show you an example, a simple example, but it will make it, I think, much uh, easier. For example, let's talk about connectivity. Okay, how can, uh, well, we are given, you know, there's a communication graph, a subset of the edges is marked locally, every node knows which of its incident edges is in the marked subset. And the question is, is the marked sub subset connected? Okay, now I claim that in order to decide that by a PLS, you, you must have at least omega log n bits. And by an RPLS, you must have at least omega log log n bits. And why is that? Here's an example. Suppose that the, uh, we have this instance which is just a, a line of n nodes. Okay? Now the fooling set would be every other edge. So these are the edges marked by uh, bold lines here. Okay? So now what happens when we cross any two of them? We'll get something that looks like that. Okay? So we cross this edge and that edge. And now what we have is a cycle and a line. So the result of crossing any pair of edges here make the graph disconnected. Okay? So we have a fooling set of linear size. And so the theorem says that the labels of any, PL, of any deterministic PLS must be of size uh, omega log n. And the labels uh, and the communication overhead for any randomized one-sided error PLS must be omega log log n. Okay? Okay. Here's another slightly more interesting example. Uh, let's say this is about vertex by connectivity. So again, we have a subset of edges. And the question is, is this subset constitute a, bi a vertex by connected graph? Okay? So, and we will see that again, we need omega log n uh, bits for deterministic PLS and omega log log n bits for uh, randomized PLS. And how is that? Here's the example. This is a yes instance, right? I mean, this is a, this is a cycle of n nodes. And we have chords emanating from one of the nodes, all possible chords. Okay? So any two nodes, uh, any node that, uh, I'm sorry, any two nodes that you take out will still uh, have the graph connected. Okay? Uh, so now what do we do? Uh, the fooling set will be now every third edge. And if be, so what happens when we cross such two edges? What we get is actually two corded cycles connected in, the single, in, a, in a single node. So this is not a vertex by connected because if we remove W, the graph will become disconnected. Okay? So, just by applying, uh, by applying uh, our crossing theorem, we have this lower bound of omega log n bits for communication deterministically, log log n uh, non-deterministically. And if we think about the bioconnectivity algorithm of, of Tarjan, we see that actually we can do also a, a constructive uh, labeling uh, using only log n bits deterministically and log log n bits uh, randomized. Okay, questions so far? So just a, a few words about the proof and we'll wrap up. Uh, the idea of the proof is, is the following. So, so the, the, the condition was that we have an instance and a fooling set so that crossing any two edges in the fooling set will uh, change the result of, of, of uh, the predicate we, are, we want to verify, okay? And so the idea is the following. There are, if there are only very few edges, uh, very few, uh, only few labels, then the number of, la actually the number of labels is smaller than the size of F, for example, then, uh, then there must be two edges that share the same labeling. 
So if we just cross them, the, the, no node will be able to locally distinguish between the crossed and the original scenario, even though the, the result must change somewhere. And, but, but since no node can uh, distinguish that, they will have the same output, which means that the output is wrong. So for the deterministic PLS, all we need to ask is just that the number of labels is smaller than f, roughly, uh, which means that the label size must be at least log of the size of the falling set. For the, uh, one si uh, for the randomized program, uh, proof labeling scheme, it's more complicated because, e because we don't have actually labels sent over the edges, what we have is uh, these randomized certificates. And we cannot, you know, ask that the number of distributions over, over actually not over labels, over certificates, is smaller than the, uh, than the full incest size. Okay? So, uh, what we do is the following. In the run, if we talk about one-sided error, then we, we can say that the two, the two distributions are differ if they have different support, if a set of certificates with positive probability is different. Now, the number of different supports is only if we are if over certificates of length k is at most 2 to the 2 to the k, right? right? Each k uh, each k bit certificate may have 2 to the k values, so we are talking about subsets of, uh, of uh, sets of size to the, to the k, so we have this double exponential. So this is for one-sided error. Uh, we do a lot of more complicated work, which I will not go into, and show that the, for two-sided errors, we also need this uh, log log or we have this double exponential uh, 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 blow up. But here we need to assume that, e that the certificates of layoff uh, that's sent by the same node are independent conditioned on the, uh, the local label, which is kind of strange. I mean, this, is, uh, this way we have uh, the certificates uh, have this product distribution. But uh, that's this way the, the uh, proof goes through, and we don't know how to prove it otherwise for two-sided error. Uh, OK, so uh, for minimum spanning tree, which is a classical problem in distributed computing, uh, there is a proof labeling scheme, a deterministic proof labeling scheme, that uses uh, log squared n uh, bits. And now with randomization, this uh, means that we have both the uh, upper bound of all the log log n bits for mu communication and the matching lower bound up to a constant of omega log log n. Uh, so this closes the gap for a minimum weight spanning tree. And let me just wrap up by uh, saying, well, what we have here is this, the idea of randomized uh, proof labeling scheme, which is a very natural idea and very effective one. Um, and we have this general technique of uh, showing lower bounds for distributed uh, proof labeling scheme, which is this crossing trick. Uh, we still, uh, there are still lots of things that we don't understand well, for example, we don't know whether we can actually utilize all our proof labeling schemes are one-sided. We don't know whether using, you know, a, a two-sided error can help. And we have no, no example for that. Uh, uh, we are not sure about what will happen if the final decision would be randomized. As I said, only the ver verification consists of generating random certificates and then uh, deciding locally, and we use randomization only in the generation and not in the decision. So uh, it's not uh, obvious what will happen there. And uh, another question not listed here is maybe uh, strengthening 
the analysis in, uh, of uh, crossing to allow the lower bound to hold also for general two-sided error schemes. Okay, I'll stop here. <laughs>